I'm Elizabeth. I'm a graduate student studying somatic psychology and welcome to my channel. So just like calling into the space how I'm feeling, I am right on the cusp of falling into my full-blown PMDD episode. So I'm struggling a little bit to stay low in my body and my brain is kind of all over the place. <laughs> so we're gonna do the best we can because I wanted to kind of show you what it's like, maybe give some insight into uh, just, you know, how it feels. <laughs> um, but also to just be vulnerable and show you what it's like. Um, also showing you how I cope with it and a couple of things I've been doing and how I track it and things like that. So let us begin as outside gets so loud. All right. Um, so I have PMDD, which stands for premenstrual dysphoric disorder. Um, I'm not going to go into what it is fully because I already did that on my boyfriend's channel. Uh, so you can go check that out on his page. But essentially, PMDD is kind of known as extreme PMS. I find that that kind of belittles just how severe it is. But essentially what it's like is the week before my period, I feel like I change into a totally different person where I'm on edge, things that I normally found interesting, I have no interest in whatsoever. I have an urge to isolate. Um, I have extreme mood swings, my rage gets activated, and it's just incredibly difficult for me to regulate myself. Um, so we are on day three of what I call the misty period, <laughs> um, where for the past three days I've been feeling it kind of come into my life like a mist. Um, so there were just a couple days where I noticed interactions or things really kind of landed deeply in me and really dysregulated my system. Um, and yesterday I had a full-blown rage experience uh, where my system just got totally overwhelmed by being in a group of people for a number of hours yesterday, which was hard. Um, Yeah, so even now I'm feeling how just talking about it lifts my energy up and high in my body. So I'm going to take a few moments of pause. And now I feel my energy is kind of shifted a little lower. Yeah, I don't know if I said this already again confusion and lack of focus. So right now I'm really with my body, noticing everything that's kind of firing inside of me. Um, and I'm having several thoughts go through my head at the same time, but aren't the thoughts that I actually want to like talk about and think about. So anytime I have a direct task during this time, what I'm supposed to do, um, it's almost like my brain has a hard time seeing the through line or knowing the steps to get to the point you want to be at. And I find if I continue to return to the body and lowering my energy, the easier it is for me to talk um, and to just at least express how I'm feeling. So I'm going to do my best to stay with myself as I continue with this video. I can already tell probably by tonight I'm going to be in my PMDD. Like right now we're in the foggy stage where you can see the fog, it's thick, and you're kind of sitting in here going, ugh, at any moment a dragon's about to pop out, or at any moment, you know, the big scary thing's gonna hit. So, things that I've been tracking about 
this episode is that I've been more up and I've had quite a lot of energy, a bit too much energy than I know what to do with. And I've been conscious to be slow with myself even though I have this excess amount of energy because I know that if I exert myself fully, I'm going to be completely depleted by the time my PMDD episode hits in full. So I've been reading, I've been waking up and doing like 20 minutes of yoga just to kind of settle back into my body. I've been taking a lot of pauses with myself. And also I've been channeling that energy in healthy ways by going to the gym, lifting weights, exercising, going for walks, things like that. So let's talk about how I cope with it. <laughs> I cope with it by being with it. Um, so as I'm sure you're already experiencing, I kind of can get lost in my own sensation and my own inner world of it. Um, and I actually find that regulating and healthy for me because I'm not actually thinking, I'm just watching sort of the waves of energy and sensation that are passing through my body. And right now I'm feeling um, like a buzzing in my legs uh, that's kind of shooting my energy up. And so I'm having to kind of consciously ground and remember to ground just to kind of keep in access there. I'm noticing a lot of energy in my hips, kind of like static electricity. Um, and it's kind of coming up the sides of my body a bit and up the back and up through the back of my head. So it's, it's a lot <laughs> and it's a lot to notice. But if I don't keep my eye on this, watching this happen to me, in the past what has happened is I get extremely anxious. Um, I experience every interaction is threatening. Um, I start to really hear my internal critic kind of like uh, go at me. And if I can just be with the sensation in my body and apply no meaning to it, um, I notice that mentally I'm pretty okay. Um, you know, emotionally, I'm actually doing really good. And I'm processing these things as a physiological thing that's happening to me because frankly, they are, <laughs> um, especially with PMDD. Uh, you know, it's a hormonal thing and this is my body just kind of doing its cycle. And I don't have to attach meaning to these sensations in my body unless I choose to. Um, I wanna give a caveat <laughs> that what I'm doing currently uh, with myself is really safe and healthy for me because that's how I normally process things. And I have a deep internal wisdom of my own intuition. But for other people who don't have PMDD or who struggle with that, that could be potentially a little spicy. <laughs> so I'm always an advocate for do what's best for you. This is just what's best for me. So the other thing that really helps me is knowing when it's gonna happen. So for example, I, um, I write down in a journal um, every single day and I mark on the calendar right when I start to experience uh, symptoms. So the other the couple days ago, I started feeling it, so I started tracking it. And um, I have a little thing I can show you. So this is from August and I color code it. I don't know if you can see this, uh, who knows, life is hard. Um, but essentially I have to see it all in one big piece. That way I'm able to, I think, compartmentalize it a little bit more and a little bit better. This essentially tells me, okay, I know when it's gonna happen and I can brace and kind of prepare myself for it. Um, and that's what I do. So because I know when it's going to happen, I'm able to really implement a lot of um, practices and behaviors that help me cope better. So 
For example, I've been really mindful with how I'm feeling, taking really intricate notes for the past several days. Um, I made sure that I was eating well and that I was drinking plenty of water, you know, just taking care of the system at whole. And I have been taking advantage of the time that I have in order to take in pleasure. So with PMDD, often I feel like uh, certain pathways get blocked and, you know, like things that usually I find funny or stuff I usually find pleasurable or just being able to take in the good, essentially, um, becomes very, it's a struggle and it's a bit of an effort to do that. So I try to really fill up myself with pleasure and beauty um, almost as much as I can beforehand. So I make sure that I see my friends. I watch things that I find beautiful. I go for a walk and I'm really looking around, taking in all the beauty around me, things like that. Um, I make sure to spend a lot of gooey, wonderful time with my partner, you know. <laughs> Just like really filling that cup up so that I'm able to hold on to that through this difficult time. Um, and again, it goes. And this is this is like the part of PMDD that um, I struggle with the most is the mental fog, um, the fact that, like, I'm being so distracted by a thousand things, um, and, like, the constant practice back into my body, back into my experience, back in, like, the here and now kind of thing. And right now what I'm experiencing is, like, this, like, wave of heat, because I just had a thought that I'd forgotten something. And it feels like it was important, but I can't remember what it is. So there's like the wave of shame that kind of hits. And so I'm just like being with that. Now I'm feeling like the inner critic is like kind of knocking at my door. So I'm having to do a lot of internal spaciousness. And it's like, there's a part of me that's like holding up my inner supporter, just being like, no, like everything's okay. <laughs> just keep going. Uh, um, let's find our way back. What I've been doing this entire time is being very exposed with my practice that I do internally all the time, uh, particularly when I'm on my PMDD. Uh, and it's work. It, it's, it's a constant work to sort of be floating along and choosing what you're paying attention to and choosing what you're not. And just even sitting here, my thoughts, I can't pay attention to because if I did, I would stop filming this. I, and I wouldn't, do anything probably for another two weeks <laughs> of trying to like be more visible and talk and express my experience. Um, and what keeps me in relation, what keeps me present, what keeps me able to go forward is when I return to my body and when I give my awareness and my attention over to my sensations. I'm just taking in a bit of a special moment with some birds over there that I appreciated. And I'm feeling called to sharing this, you know, like I really feel like my PMDD moves my nervous system into the fight and flight phase. And the more that I return to my body, the more that I lean into myself, um, 
the more I'm in the sympathetic relational part in my nervous system where now I have access to that. Um, where even in this moment I was able to like appreciate the birds and really feel and take that in. Um, and I truly believe this is all possible because one, I have had PMDD pretty much since I've had my period. So it's been frankly my whole adult life. And I have spent that time becoming very aware of how my body changes and how my body feels when it comes on. So I am attuned to the signals in my own body and I have become more aware of how my brain tries to make sense of those feelings by attaching meaning, by attaching story, by attaching essentially negative thought patterns to those sensations. And this experience is easier for me to go through when I know for certain that the things that my brain is telling me are just not true. And there's something so grounding and lovely to be able to trust my body. Um, and that when I move my inner eye to my body and its sensations, the mind gets quiet. And the part of my PMDD that is the most difficult thing to cope with suddenly becomes, there's like a little more space. There's a little more, we're okay. I just realized that I lit a incense burner and I totally forgot about it. I was gonna light some frankincense to help ground myself. So yeah, another, another example right there <laughs> of how no matter what, during this time, you're just gonna forget things and you're going to... And I'm just like, even now, like in appreciation for, I'm able to laugh at that. <laughs> like I'm able to, you know, go like, oh, it's just me during this time. Um, and I think levity is important. I think it's important to be able to still laugh at yourself a little bit. Um, and to know also that, like, it's not your fault. Because even if something as silly as that incense burner, for instance, the old me, that would have set me off at this point. It would have made me feel such shame and guilt and like, oh, and I, the video is awful and ruined and I can't blah, blah, blah. Um, and then that would have trickled into everything else that I did today and tomorrow and the days ahead where it's all like one little hiccup and I can't do anything and it just like explodes it out. Um, and again, coming back to the body. And now because I'm able to be aware of just that process, I don't get caught up in it. <laughs> you know, I, uh, I don't get swept away. So if you're like me, a way into this kind of practice that I do, and it's just a simple um, internal energy awareness. That's right, I was talking about a way in. Here we go, uh, hands. <laughs> If you simply start to play with your hands, and I mean this play, like find it fun, find it kind of interesting. Um, naturally, like a, a rhythm to them is gonna unfold when you're not conscious about it and you're just sort of letting almost your hands do what they want. And as you're playing with this and as you're kind of going down the sensation, find a moment that feels like, ooh, yeah, that feels really good, and then just let them be. And notice how your hands feel now, just in space. Maybe they're tingling. And notice how the sensation in your hands perhaps is starting to move. 
maybe it's going up your arms. Up into your shoulders. Down your back. And whichever way it's flowing is the right way for you, so don't feel like you have to change it. Just be aware of where it's going and let it go where it wants to. And just as best you can, follow the flow. The car turning on was like, wah! Um, but that's a way in if it's not intuitive for you to kind of like pay attention to like what your body is telling you. So I've just remembered I was supposed to call someone. <laughs> So I think I'm going to finish here. I'm very happy that I pushed through my PMDD and that I did it anyway, even if it's messy, even if it's, you know, not as good as a part of me would wish it to be. Um, so yeah, thank you for sitting here with me, having a chat, and I'm really excited for some other offerings that I have in mind when I'm not in this state. Okay. All right.